This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report. The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep Southgate running. Hey guys, podcast. Check out some other podcasts at Southgate, especially if you're into comic. Check out Kevin Ticks, where sometimes you'll find me not too busy. Uh, Upset, Super Connectivity, Capes and Steven has the side episodes. Check out those as well as Titans Talk to get all see comic or more. They're there. Welcome to the Krypton Report. This episode is going to be fun. You know why? Because unlike most episodes of this show, where James and I are exhaustedly tired, photo. with this episode, we're awake because we're doing it early in the morning on this bright, brisk uh, Ohio day. After last week, we suffered a snowstorm. Yeah. And now we're back up into the 40s and pretty much all the snow is gone. Yep. In one day. In one day. it was. That's it. That's, that's it in Ohio. Maybe the Midwest, but... Definitely Northwest Ohio with this lake effect with the Great Lakes here. Mm -hmm. Like we get, we can easily get three seasons, if not all four, within within a week. Sometimes within a couple of days. (laughs) It's it's ridiculous, right? I mean, people are like, "Oh, that's Ohio." I'm like, "Yeah, that's Ohio." I'm like, "It's uh, it's crazy." But it's like the Hobbit. It's like the Hobbit days worth of meals but seasons like we've had in a single day you got you got, you got you wake up with first winter and then you get like false spring or false fall and then you wake up or and then a little bit later you get like second winter and then in midday it's real sunny and bright and no wind and it feels nice and comfortable outside and then by the evening you're back down into like negative temperatures <laughs> exactly you're like you're like, how did this happen? <laughs> and being up early, kids are rambunctious, so well, you so probably you're a, hear you're that. Having a, you're having a party in your house. I want to join <laughs> James's party. It's James's party. See, this is why I need a laptop, so that way I can close my bedroom door and just, you know, not deal with all that noise. Yeah. Close the bedroom door, lock it, like. They're, my kids are ten. My kids are about to turn ten and eleven. They don't need me unless <laughs> nobody's bleeding or crying. Lock the door and just don't mess up the house. Well, I don't get t- injured. I will tell you this. So this morning, Sailor wakes me up again and says, "Daddy, can I have coffee?" I'm like, "All right, baby, give me a second. I'm waking up." So I'm, I'm getting up, moving around, heading to uh, to get her a cookie. And I'm not fast enough, so I turn around, and there she is, climbing on the counter with her chair, getting her cookie. And I'm just like, hold on, girl. Like, man, demanding child. (laughs) If she says cookie, daddy, I don't jump. It's over, man. It's like baby Herman climbing across the counter and who framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And then running across like Roger Rabbit, screaming, ah! And this is how cool my daughter is. And then she's like, Daddy, I'm hungry still. I said, okay, baby, what do you want? She looks at me and goes, I want green beans. Uh, Coming right up, baby. Coming right up. So That's when you just need, like, like baby carrots and, like, fresh fresh bro- broccoli florets in, in the fridge. So that way you can just pull out your little veggie tray for her and, like, go to town. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's – she is – it's good when kids like vegetables. Oh yeah, like a I, lot of kids don't. If I, they like vegetables, get them eating them and let them and get them to keep eating them because oh yeah, I totally made it. That's why when you messed me, I was like, "Yep, I'm good." I'm like, oh, "I'm getting ready" because I mean, I had my coffee done, I was ready to go, and then she's like, "Daddy, I want green beans." I'm like, "I'm not going to say no." Right. Your brother, I can't get to eat anything else up in the world, but baby girl, if you want some green beans, coming up. Right. But let's get into this week's episode of Supergirl Confidence Woman. Now, this episode definitely proves what I had said before, that we were at that time in the series um, where they're filming crisis stuff because our main actors 
are disappearing for, you know, out of episodes. Like, uh, I was talking about this with Brian with the previous Flash episode where it was pretty much just Cisco as the lead. I'm like, yeah, because Grant's off working on Crisis. And then this episode kind of does the same where it's a very heavy Lena and Andrea focused. And I'm okay with that because these are characters that are important now that we need time with. We need to understand who these people are. And yeah, it was a pretty cool flashback episode. Although I must say, just jumping into it real quick, young Lena, okay, college age Lena and college age, may, maybe they were freshmen in college, but they look like maybe seniors in high school, if that, and they do not look anything like Lena and Andrea. Later on, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> I could not see them growing into them in 10 years. Yeah, exactly. It was one of those like, ah, all right, just cast them. We, we, need, we need the actors. It's suspension of disbelief, people. Right. <laughs> so it's like, it's like use just like a little bit of special effects money and like make them look a little younger. Like they don't even have to look like, like, like Alex and, and Kara did from Midvale. I mean, that was taking them back to early high school. You needed different actors. Yeah. Um, but like doing like freshmen in college, they're basically going to look the exact same they do now, except with a little less, you know, age lines and, and like wisdom. You know what I mean? They might be thinner. They might be fatter. You know, like make, put them in a fat suit. Since they were fat in college and now they're not, you know, just. <laughs> um, so. I, I actually really like this episode because I feel like Lena's been around long enough and exploring more of her story and her as a character, especially with what's going on now and this season, is very important. And this has really helped us understand her character more with stuff that – and it doesn't feel like it's retconning. You know what I'm saying? Like um, we're going back and telling stuff, and it, it feels like it, – it really feels like it works comfortably with how we met Lena and how things developed – in the earlier seasons. So I don't feel like they're forcing any kind of retcon on us. Um, so good job writers. Good job. Yeah. 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 Her, her, um, her development within this episode, um, being purely flashback until, until the, um, present. Yeah. It, and I, I think it, I think it did well to build up her, um, to build up her, her backstory and, and incorporated what they had given us, since she showed up in season two. Uh, James, I just want to say something to you. Yes. You jump, I jump. <laughs> I'm king of the world. <laughs> Whose favorite movie is Titanic? All right, look, I'm just going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. Titanic. And say college and high school girls in the 90s. I mean, Titanic was depressing. <laughs> okay, I saw it because it was like a big deal. Everyone was like, oh my God, you got to see it. And we went and saw it and there was one part that as a 12 year old boy that I quite enjoyed. And I was, I was just far enough out of my mom's reach where she couldn't cover my eyes and get to me. Um, so yes. And that, I mean that, think about it. Like now, like now we have stuff where we can know exactly what's in movies when we come out. Like if it's PG thirteen, like the the rating system will break down everything that's in. And that, that makes it, yeah. But back then, <laughs> no, and it's crazy to say back then when referring to nineteen ninety seven. Um, <laughs> but it was just kind of fun that that was them. So let's jump into the episode. Do you have a summary prepared? Um, oh, I one. pulled I pulled I pulled something up on Wikipedia this morning. Beautiful. So that, that'll work for today. Take us there, James. <laughs> All right. Um, Supergirl season five, episode six, Confidence Women. Flashbacks show how Andrea and Lena met and how their relationship became strained. While searching for the Akrata medallion, uh, Andrea has her first encounter with Leviathan, who put her up to killing Governor Harper and Caroline and Caroline O'Connor by telling her how said medallion works to further their goals. Leviathan brainwashes Rogers into becoming Riproar to act on their behalf. In present, Andrea is assigned to eliminate the captured Rogers, but her first attempt to break into the DEO fails. She does. She goes to Lena for help. 
So she sets up a fake break-in for Supergirl to investigate while Akrata raids the DEO uh, headquarters once again with psychic tech, making off with Rip Roar even in spite of Supergirl's intervention. During the raid, Supergirl discovers the latter's connection to Leviathan. Andrea gives Lena the medallion and attempts to run away with Rogers, but a Leviathan operative kills him before one of their representatives uh, before one of their representatives meets with her. Though she says she doesn't have the medallion anymore, she's told it merely activated her powers, which actually came from the darkness within her. Elsewhere, Alex and Lena independently continue to learn more about Leviathan. All right. Awesome. Good job, James. Um, so real quick note. As we, we had mentioned before, like Leviathan is a new and event Leviathan just ended in the comic and i will say i'm a little underwhelmed uh, so i didn't get to pick up my or did i pick up event leviathan last week i won't or did that come out this week i won't it came out this week and i won't okay say, i'm not gonna say anything more i'm just saying like i was a little underwhelmed with the whole how it turned out um yeah so well, like I'm, I, I didn't even, I haven't even gotten a chance to read last week's books, and I got to go pick up this this week's books. So, I, I'm a, I'm a handful of issues behind on everything, but um, I will say, I, I mean, did. Um, and that's because we were this week extremely slow at work. Mm. So I'm one of those people like I have to like I got to be doing something. Um, so we were extremely slow at work. So I uh, just kept up on my computer and was reading digital comics on my computer at work. It also helped me do some school reading at the same time, um, to get kind of ahead. So that was nice. So, um, yeah, so I caught up that way. Like I caught up on Tom King's Batman. I've, I've read, um, you know, Superman 17, which was garbage. It's garbage, man. Like, uh, I'm really about to stop, and I hate to say this, because I wanted I wanted us to talk comics towards the end of the episode, but um, just real quick, and then we'll save some discussion. I'm really about to stop reading the weekly books for Superman in action. Yeah, Bendis is not being impressive at all. Um, I feel like I'm wasting. Seriously, the best thing about his entire run on both books has been the art. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I just, and that has nothing to do with him, or very little. <laughs> I mean, when Rebirth started, and you know, we had uh, Tomasi on. Uh, I'm probably gonna get this backwards, but Tomasi I think was on Action, and Jurgens was on Superman. Um, I, my microphone doesn't stretch far enough to my comic shelf, um, but I was completely like, I loved it. I mean, I was so excited. I look forward to it every issue. And now since Bendis took over, I'm like, oh, Superman's here. It, it's kind of like how I fell when the New 52 started. Like, I have a huge chunk of New 52 books, but I don't have them all because I just – it just got off where I wasn't like, oh, I wasn't digging it. Um, and I'm just like – I'm getting that point with Superman right now. And I hate saying that. Um, well, so – I, I wish they if they if they would get a different writer on one of the books if they would let Bendis tell his story like maybe if he was telling his story in one book it would be like we're getting more story because action and Superman are kind of working together ish at times they were then they're not you know what I'm saying um, yeah if they would just be like all right you have a story you have two ideas great just funnel your story through action comics or just do Superman um, because I kind of I kind of wish they would strict action down to being a little bit more of a I don't know well it's kind of like okay with detective comics I wish detective was more about like the stories of Batman being a detective maybe that's a so, more of a solo Batman book or something and it's more about uh, really digging into the mystery stories and then um, I don't know I'm just I'm just not really excited right now when I look for Superman comics and I hate to say that. Yeah. Um, his, his run has been, um, lackluster, uh, once in a while, there's something good that happens, but there's a lot of wasted space. Um, a lot of half, like a lot of half of its bad dialogue. Um, 
Yes. Um, like nobody would talk that way. Um, it's, it's just. It's almost there like, ah, see? Let me. Yeah. Let me take it, over the world. It's becoming a little. <laughs> right. It's becoming a little uninteresting because, like, it's just. No, it's it's stretched out so far because so little happens in so many issues. Um, like you, like if you have an idea for a story and you want to make it, say we're up to seventeen issues now, um, and he's still dealing with the invisible mafia in um, in action, which is fine. They they did an okay job with the first part of action, and then they started getting into the Leviathan. Um, so, you know, you added another element and you're coming back. In my opinion, action's probably been better for the most part than Superman. There was a lot of Superman that nothing happened for a very long time. Robo it was Zara just was completely underwhelming because all of a sudden they shifted his story to Supergirl. And I felt like, okay, wait a minute. It wasn't this whole thing supposed to be your, um, your story, Bendis, like, why is it in somebody else's book? Like, why, why is the big part of your story in someone else's book? Yeah. I mean, which, it it's, so it's all right just for it to, his idea to encompass everything Kryptonian in the, um, in DC at, at the time being, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, you, you bring in Rogelzar and then the majority of the information is given in one book and then you, you do something else. So like you start something, you give it to somebody else to build and, and create the story around. And then you just come in and say, this is this and, and, and without much explanation. So you came in with an idea, but you let other people, um, fill in the blanks and you didn't even have an ending mm -hmm. like that. That's not, <laughs> that it really does not seem like how you should write a, a comic book arc. I mean, I, that doesn't seem like you should write anything. I mean, if you, if you want to compile ideas in a think tank, you know, create the entire story, the beginning, the middle and the end, but, but have it there. You know what I mean? If you want to bring in a think tank and, and bring your story into Superman, Supergirl, you know, and, and have different elements placed in each of them. Like you start it in Superman, you have a bunch of it in Supergirl, at least have, a, an ending for it in Superman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, but you didn't like, there was no ex explanation even how he, how they got out of the, the phantom zone at the, at the, the the destroyed planet of Krypton and then he's just oh now he's Kryptonian now he's weakened and boom we captured him he's in stasis that's it mm -hmm. that's it yep like it's still no explanation Jor Jor El created Robozar oh okay, okay. Uh, what does that how mean? did he create him is he is he how and how is he Kryptonian how did he have his his abilities at Krypton how is he affected by Kryptonite you know, how did he at Krypton in at the planet inside the planet's core to destroy the planet with the the device and like like so much unanswered. Like you just you didn't know you didn't plan anything out. Like if you had an idea and like then you just let let it go for for another half dozen ideas in other books. My thing is you're you're trying to all of a sudden. Um, all of a sudden you're trying to tell me that all this time Rogelzar is the one responsible for the disruption of Krypton. Well, it sounds like the circle, okay. which did you read any of Supergirl? The circle was, was responsible. Um, I did not, um, read any of Supergirl. Okay. So like real quickly, um, so Supergirl goes out into space to investigate, is this true? Did Rogelzar do this? And if so, did he do this alone? Who who was behind it? So in turn, the Circle is basically a group of powerful, powerful uh, individuals from powerful 
um, different um, um, spe uh, species and planets from around the universe. Um, Jorel was in the circle. Um, uh, Gandela, this this crystalline type um, character, and she ended up being like the big bad of the circle. Um, uh, she was in it. Um, I'm pretty I'm trying to think who else was in it. I know there was an Owen in it. So one of the green lantern guardians, he was in the circle. Um, and there was a couple other people. Um, I can't exactly think I'd have to grab some Supergirl books. Um, but there was a handful of people, uh, involved in the circle and, and they did, they were, they were basically like a, a um, kind of like a black ops type, um, organization trying to do things behind the scenes responsible for, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of atrocities and things like that. And, but even then I don't, I didn't get to a part where it was like Krypton did something and had to go or where Rogelzar had said, like he was the last of his species and like Kryptonians wiped them out. But then he was made by Jarrell and what was his species? Like, was he another species? And like they did experiments on these, these species, like did, did Krypton go out and like colonize and like take over, um, you know, different planets around the galaxy, like no explanation. And if it has any connection to the new 52, like space travel wasn't a huge thing for Kryptonians because their gravitational pull on their planet was so large that they couldn't, they, that it wasn't until the very end of the, the, um, the planet that they were able to construct rockets that could actually break the gravitational pull of the planet and, and get off off world. So I don't know, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like there's, there's still a lot there. That's not even, um, thoroughly explained. And, and you had two books at least to do it with Supergirl and Superman and 14, 15 issues and you didn't do it in each. Yeah. Exactly. And you didn't get it all. And you didn't get it all done with 30 issues of 28, 30 issues of, of books. Like is, is over a year with Superman and Supergirl since Bendis came on and Supergirl went off to find the killers of Krypton and Bendis created role bizarre. And like, it's still not, it's still not explained. Yep. Like there's still lots of questions. <laughs> And I, I mean, that's you're going to you're going you're gonna to lose people at that like that. <laughs> and, and they're starting to lose me. You know what I'm saying? And that's sad. It's just, I feel like that's where we are with comics. Like, that's what's going on. Like, we have the red cloud. But even just trying to sit here and tell you what's going on. I don't even remember because I'm that uninterested. Like, it's just been a slow dry. Like, John has left and joined the Legion. Um, which I have that book. I have Legion number one and I, I haven't read it yet. That was a last week book that I haven't gotten to open yet. The event Leviathan just ended. Um, we have the side story of deceased, which, which was, it was, it had some cool moments, but it was pretty crazy. And it's definitely like a side story, like an else world's tale. So that, yeah, it's not, it's not like in continuity. So that was just interesting. Um, if anyone's wondering why James and I haven't continued our um, reviews of Superman Year One, it's just because it's it's just uninteresting. Like it just it was it was really a letdown. And if you're if you want to know why, please go check out Last Sons of Krypton as they broke down Year One in one of their more recent podcasts. Because um, even when James and I were reading it, we were messaging back and forth. And I was just like, this is horrible dialogue. This is horrible storytelling. Horrible narration. Like, it, the narration blocks. Whether, you couldn't even tell if they were, who was if talking. they were narration, or if they were, ta if it was somebody who was talking, like, inside their head. Like, like internal dialogue. You couldn't tell. It was just, yeah, there was a lot of that. And I love, I love in books, when, like, Superman's talking, or in his head. They'll make it blue and everything, and they'll have his symbol when it starts. So when you see the blue bubbles, you know it's inside his head. Or Batman's is gray and black. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So Wonder Woman's is like red, red. with a W in it or yep. like they identify internal dialogue. So I just I mean, and then the end, dear God, the end of Superman Year One is such a quick, quick, bam, 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 duh. Like they throw so much at you and you're like, wait, this makes no sense. The pacing, the structure, none of this is just it feels like a like a child writing a story where they're just like, oh, and this happens and then this and then this and then this. And you're like, okay, well, how did we get to point A to point B? Where, where's yeah, part they, of that they really wanted to, yeah, like Frank Miller really wanted to get his own Superman origin story out there and try to draw on the popularity of his Batman year one done in a completely different way. Year one makes no sense For to call that book year one. Superman year one. Yeah. 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 It makes, yeah, it makes no sense to call Superman Superman year one. When it takes place from the time it, it's his entire life until like his, I, I'm not even sure how long into his um, uh, his early Superman days because there is no time whatsoever. The only the only semblance of time passage is is from the time he gets to Earth to the time he leaves for the military. After that, there's no idea of how long anything takes. You know. Like how long was he in Atlantis, which they just kind of just which they totally just left behind. Yeah, like each chapter is a huge jump in like departure. Like it barely talks about um, what connects it. So, I mean, I just I mean, I'll be honest. I am so uninterested in Superman year one that I haven't finished Superman year one. You haven't finished part three. No, oh, I have not finished part three. Dude, like the end, you're just going to be like, what the. I, yeah. I, I just got into I just got into him doing some early stuff in Metropolis, which is kind of cool. That part is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. So it, it gets that's to, it. That gets to that point, and you're like, okay, this is kind of an uptick. Like, all right. And mm-hmm. then and then it continues, and you're like, what, what? What is this? What? Seriously, what is going on with this story? And I and mean, that is horrible to say right now that all, pretty much the majority of Superman books are so uninteresting. I will say the Batman Superman is if you're if you're OK with the storyline of the Batman who laughs, the Batman <laughs> Superman book is pretty good. It's it's not bad. Um, yeah, it, I've enjoyed that. And I've enjoyed the Justice League books. Those those books with Superman. Good. The death of Superman from the dark multiverse was pretty interesting. Um, yep. It's a definitely a different take. And that pre- I must say, I will say I loved opening that book and getting an homage to Dan Jurgens art from the death of Superman. Um, all the artwork was drawn like that, just with a modern, uh, with a modern uptick on it. So that was really cool to see. And, and I, I mean, I like that. Like I, I enjoyed that book and, um, and I mean, that's, that's where we are with Superman right now. Um, Supergirl, like you, you've been reading it more than I have. Um, and the other thing is, I'll say this. The other thing is some of the artwork in the recent Superman book, the cover art is great. And then when you open the book, it's just flat, boring, rudimentary artwork. I mean, I will say I did like the issue where it was about John and Damien. I mean, the artwork was like, like, OK, what art school grad drew this? Exactly. That's what but uh, <laughs> but the. um but the uh, the story just just getting back to them was was kind of cool. Just seeing like you've been you only been gone for three weeks, but for Superboy it's been years, and and you know he's he's jumped in time, and just their their boy boyhood interactions with each other. You know what I mean? That was kind of cool to see because I, like- I just started reading some Super Sons, a couple of trades worth of that. Yeah, I'm I'm a little behind on my Super Sons. Um, I, th- I think I am because um, I know they they brought it back with a really cool like uh, like this happened during this period of time uh, just because it was such a hit and they kind of altered and changed that storyline. Um, so I was I don't know because I, I liked John and Damien and then all of a sudden John's all aged up in the future and Damien is like, okay. Um, so I I just. I feel like they're like, okay, Ben, just come look at what we set up for you. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to scrap that. Yeah, uh, and I got this idea. And, like, now he has this new character, and I'm okay with new characters. Um, but the Naomi thing, mm-hmm. like, 
she's kind of taking up all the attention. Um, like, and they're spinning her own book. Okay, that's cool. Uh, but it kind of, like, right now in comics, kind of reminds me of a repeat of a little bit when they did that story that Jeff Johns wrote in Superman that ended up with the creation of the solar flare. When basically it was the Superman story, but from a different angle and a different world and different planet where an Earth child went to a different planet and got powers or whatever. Um, and then Deceased feels like kind of a rehash of Blackest Night in a way. Um, and I think the concept for Deceased was really cool, though. The, it, was, um, it was. The yeah. anti-life equation combined with with death. And it's one of those things where this could have been a really good story flushed out more. It could have been in the main comics, you know, instead of doing this as a side story, like you could have just done this as a next big event. Um, and then the whole year of the villain thing reminds me kind of a villains month or whatever, when they did, um, forever evil. Yeah. Like, you know, every villain's getting their one shot and all this. And so I loved forever evil. So did I, the, the whole, the whole thing, like, going through and like on dc universe because i like on dc universe right now um i, I kind of got away for the moment because of um I'm trying to read crisis on infinite earths um but on dc universe i had gotten up to a point in my reading where i ran into like forever evil and i started ser- searching out all of the 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 villain one shots in all of the books and it's really awesome <laughs> Good Lord. So that is, that is really James and Tyler's quick summary catch up on comics. Now we're going to go back to Supergirl where we started. Um, and oh, I do have something from Phil. He sent me. Uh, um, Phil, if you're listening, this is for you. We have what's called the Kryptonian correction um, from Phil. He wanted to point out to us that um, the line from the Keanu Reeves movie that was in the previous Supergirl. It's not from Point Break. Okay. It was from Speed. Yes, it was. And as soon as he yes, said that, was. I was like, oh, now I remember. So that is brought to you by Phil Parrish, the great grandmaster of all things comic books. You can find at Thank you, Phil. I was not confident that, that, that I had the right one there. It's been a while since I've seen either one of them. <laughs> um, so you can find Phil at the Capes and Lunatics uh, podcast feed, and he is on there a lot. And um, Phil is the grand master of us all. Like if we were all comic book characters, Phil's kind of like uh, hmm, I would say the monitor of knowledge and everything, you know. But, <laughs> but so, nice, you know. He's he's the keeper of the keys. Um, so now back to Supergirl. First of all, Rip Roar is Russell Rogers. Double R's, man. Can we? They, did, you know, somebody had fun with that. Like like Russell Rogers. What's what's his name? Rip Roar. Really? Really, James? Rip Roy? Yeah, why not? All right, let's just go with Robo Octopus here. Um, yeah, yeah, he's Robo Doc Ock is what he is. He's Robo Cop mixed with Dr. Octopus. And then we, we see that Andrea has her ability. And I, my first thought was, is she supposed to be Shade? But then I guess Shade was on uh, The Flash, I think it was. So she still could be a version of Shade. Um, I know there's a couple of people um, so- with with dark powers, but... Because that was my um, first thought. And then I thought, is she Orchid? Uh, and I was trying to figure out, like, who she's supposed to be. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a little of, a little bit of a surprise. Um, it's not like I was like, oh, my God, when um, when it revealed her to be Andrea. <laughs> I, I wasn't was just like, like, oh, my God, my life is altered. I was like, OK, I guess, <laughs> it, I guess it makes sense, you know. But, yeah. I was like, uh I was like, oh, the shadow. I was like, that's pretty cool, though. You know, the shadow coming in and out, like being fast, working in the in the in the shadow like that kind of being basically smoke um, or something. Uh, I was like, she's pretty cool. And like, like but she, obviously, you know, she couldn't she shouldn't have the abilities to get around Supergirl. Um, and then and then in the rain, she pops up. And the thing was, it's like that tiny little mask as soon as her head comes up, starts to come up, you're like, oh, that's Andrea. Yeah. And then they hold on her and hold on her. And then she takes off the mask like it's a reveal. It's like, <laughs> we, we, we didn't know what said. Just I because I can't you, see your cheekbones doesn't mean I don't know it's you. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was, they lingered on her too long. Like it was some kind of big reveal when she took off that like tiny little mask. Like, like it's not even like, like, a, like a full, what's, what do we call them? Um, there's a proper name. There's a proper name for that type of mask, but it's not mask. even domino mask. Yeah. There's not even a full, it's not even a full domino mask. It's like literally the outline of a domino mask and like, like reveal her face. Now you can tell it's her like, eh, okay. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, her costume is basically a reworked. It's the rain costume reworked. Like the mask is not the same, but like the black looks like the same. They just took the symbol off the chest and just reworked a mask. I mean, you got, you got to think like there's somebody whose job is to walk through the costuming department and you have all the shows probably have right there. Like, okay, I'm just going to pick and choose from these different costumes and make a new one. Right. This rack over here is Supergirl. This rack is the Flash. This rack is Arrow. Let's see what I can pick and choose. And <laughs> Exactly. Because you know it's not a new costume created just for her. It's a recycled costume uh, from the different stuff. And it looks to be recycled from the rain uh, era. Um, so, but we get a backstory. So... Andrea and Lena were friends, and, it's, and it skips to 15 years ago when they meet in school. And Lena is drawing this symbol. She's obsessed with the story her mother told her, and Andrea and her start bonding, and we find out their favorite movie was Titanic. Um, and th this is the one that kind of threw me a little bit because it jumps and says, five years ago, Lex Luthor in Metropolis, and we see a little bit more with John Cryer, which was cool to have him pop up in this episode, because those are scenes we hadn't seen before where he basically is telling, he's going to take her out, um, in everything of the company. And he's Superman obsessed. Um, it's very interesting, you know, just seeing that. And that leads to where he tried to make the sun. Um, what do you call it? Red to destroy Superman. So that's like right before Supergirl started. If you think about it, because, you know, the show kind of exists in the ongoing timeline of the seasons. So this would be like year five of her being Supergirl. Am I, am I right? Um, year five. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would this would be year five of her being Supergirl. So that would be like it said five years ago with Lena. So that would be right before um, it started, you know, right before Kara comes a Supergirl. Um which is which is a uh, very interesting. And did, that, yeah, I was looking. Did that say five years ago? Like the, it said five years ago when Le when Lena and Lex started arguing and he became obsessed with destroying Superman. And then it says four years ago where he turned the sun red, and that's what threw me. Yeah, no, their time. I thought so. Their timeline is off. Um, for Superman, it would have been more like thirteen years ago. It should have been a lot. And longer. then yeah, it would have been like thirteen years ago. At least like Superman had been around, has been around for probably at least eight years by the time Supergirl shows up because um, he's long and well established um, before Supergirl shows up. And then it's been another five years since. So, well, not even I mean, at this point in his career, like right now, like even if he was even if he was only established for, say, two or three years when Kara crash landed on earth she was a teenager at around 13 14 years old and she was in her mid-20s when she became supergirl so that scene with lex and lena would have had to been so five years say another 10 years that that scene would have had to been easily 15 years ago it just it to make sense it just doesn't for, fit right. I mean, no. Like I said, there's there's a couple of things in here. Like I don't want to skip too far ahead because uh, it is kind of broken up in the timeline. Um, so we see Andrea, um, his father, is about to launch a phone for their Rojas Industries, and we get a glimpse that yeah, for Obsidian, Ma Max Maxwell Lord Lord Industries has a phone that comes out that's even better than theirs before theirs drops. So we do get a Was nice that the second name drop for Maxwell Lord in three years since it came over to the CW. Yep. So, the, <laughs> um, uh, so that is sorry, I cut him off and he made you lose your train of thought. No, it's just it's <laughs> it's nice to see there's actually some acknowledgement about what's happened. Um, 
because it's, it's gotten to the point where like every now and then there'll be something like a oh the DEO desert base or like oh yeah hey or remember Fort Ross wink wink and you're like oh yeah yeah I'm- so so this episode it's kind of like them trying to do Man of Steel and I can't remember the exact name of the second episode of Lex House of L maybe um it's kind of like them trying to do those episodes kind of a flashback to catch you up on on the person and what they've gone through for lena and andrea um not done as well uh hold on one second no you're fine but no i you're right just thinking about the the template is perfect to what man of steel was where we took our time with him and did his back his backstory and that would be perfect with thinking about the production of doing the crossover at that time. Um, so it, it is interesting that, and I don't, I don't mind these episodes that take time to develop a character because Lena needs more development so that when she does get back to her core conflict right now with Car and Supergirl, we understand that betrayal because this episode sets up how Lena was betrayed. And that was the interesting part. Um, uh, that was the interesting part that kind of at least lends credibility to how hurt she has been. Because I know I said something about that um, a couple of episodes ago about how, like, how hard she is taking this quote unquote betrayal of, of being lied to. Um, you know, she she grew up with the Luthers, so that's what she knows. You know what I mean? Um, the first person she now after this, the first person she became like good friends with did the same thing, did a similar thing to her, yes. lied to her and betrayed her. And then she didn't do Then She didn't want friends. And then she becomes friends with Kara and then down the line finds out that she had been lying to her. So it's just kind of history repeating itself over and over again. So it lends some credibility to why she is so hurt. Yes. Um, and why she's going down the spiral about wanting to control people. Um, yeah. Cause it keeps happening to her over and over again. So what we find out is when Andrea's father, okay. When they learned about the phone, he's basically suicidal and Lena and Andrea get together and form an expedition to go find this medallion because Lena believes that this medallion or not even the medallion, the, the story is true and it has the power to stop Lex from what he's going to do. And so they decide to go so that because Andrea's board is going to let, let all these people go, lose their jobs, stuff like that. And they have a couple of days. So they go to the, to the jungle to find it. Um, so they go and what happens Andrea falls into a, a cave and then there's an old dude down there old man representation of this is what kind of lost me this dude was just, and he's like we know about your father blah blah take the medallion you always call upon you and be fine with you so Andrea takes the medallion Lena gets down there to save sees that it's gone you know then Andrea lies to Lena about it next day or so Andrea's father is fine his health is good their stock skyrockets so we know leviathan was doing some stuff in the back and then we, we go ahead a little bit and remember jack from was it last season or season before last i want to see was season three i Le- think so lena's think- ex-lover friend scientist guy who i can't remember what his villain name was but he was like cyber or something um he comes back and it shows how they rekindle their romance. They're, she's going to take her to London because this is when Lex is, you know, uh, she stopped Lex. But she wants, you know, away from it all. And they go to London and there's Andrea and Lena gets excited to see her friend. But what is Andrea wearing around her neck? James? The medallion she finds, the medallion that Lena was looking for and Andrea found and Boom. told her wasn't there lied to her betrayed her took her took what she was looking for and boom lena is pissed and she is angry and that is a huge turn in her then thus lena leaves to go to national city 
She wants to change. She wants to restore the Luther name. She is, you know, and then that, and then we get some scenes that are nice with her and Kara, where we see Kara tries to just friend Lena. Um, says, you know, three years ago, it talks about Supergirl. Uh, Kara invites Lena to go to game night. Lena declines because um, of just everything, you know, like I'm not here to make friends. I'm here. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. I forgot what, I forgot what the emails were about from back then, but you know, she, she returns some emails to her, you know, she's like, I would hate for you to think that, you know, you given these, giving me these would, would constitute us being friends. And, you know, if that's the case, publish them and, you know, she's like, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to do that. And yeah, cars just generally know. like, no, like I recovered these like cat co got these. These are personal or private. There's no need uh, for this. It <clears> gives them and gives them to her just yeah. generally being the good person that she is. And I think, you know, sidestepping, that's kind of like the dichotomy of of Superman and Supergirl in the sense that they're very truthful beings in their own dis- forms like Superman is truthful. Clark Kent is truthful. Supergirl is truthful. Kara Danvers Kent is truthful. But when it comes to having to reveal their secret of the other part is where they have to lie or manipulate um, to hide that truth, which is which which sucks, because other than that, like, you know, they're they're completely honest other than who they are. Yeah. And it's and and in that respect, it's not it's not that they don't want people to know who they are. I mean, it's kind of twofold. If somebody knew who the if if they knew who they were, like Smallville did an episode of it where everybody knew that Clark Kent was, um, what was it the red blue blur or 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 the blur or something at the time? Yep. Um, and everywhere he went, people were putting themselves in danger just so he would save them. You know what I mean? Kind of like get your picture, get a smart, get saved by the guy. You know what I mean? Like. It's, it's one they have no life. It's no and different if two it's like it's it's not a it's not a protection from from people knowing who they are. It's not for like protection from them or anything. It's protection for those people because um like it's dangerous to know who they are. Right. And and the thing is it's it'd be no different than like if if Tom Willie moved in next door to me. You know, but oh my god, Tom Tom, hey, Tom, Tom, you know, like people would just never let you go. Like, oh, my God, can you believe Tom lives over here? Or can you believe Johnny Depp lives next door to me? You know, like, or, oh, my God, Robert Downey Jr. Like there would be no rest. Like, you know, look at that kind of idea of what celebrity people kind of experience with Pavarazzi and all that. Like it would be that on a bigger, massive scale. Mm -hmm. Um, But so we get that. um, And while that's going on, we get flashbacks to how Andrea meets Russell. And Russell and her, you know, have their relationship. He was going to work for her, but was going to turn down the proposal to just open his own company based on his cyber uh, robotic systems that he was working on. He had his prototype. Uh, We then learn because he finds the medallion that she's supposed to have with her. Leviathan shows up and it's the old lady. So we've only met two agents of Leviathan, the old lady and the old man. Uh, Old lady Leviathan is what I have in my notes for. And yeah. They kidnap Russell, basically are going to kill him, torture him because of, of Andrea. And she talks him into his prototype. And we see them like surgically attaching his prototype to his back. And it looks brilliant. Um, you know, it is. Just... And then, like you said, skipping to the end of the episode where Lena offers Cadmus tech to fix Russell after they break him out of the D.E.O. He gets shot by old man Leviathan. Yeah. So the guy who told her who was secretly there in the cave. So I wonder if there's going to be more of a mystical element to Leviathan. And I don't know. I mean, they, they've got eyes. They've got eyes everywhere. Somehow they I don't know how they know or what they know about the medallion. You know what I mean? Being some kind of ancient myth. Um, but they just they pop in and out of nowhere. Like, I mean, in the comics they teleport, but there's like bright blue light. There's, you know, seeming like large scale destruction kind of thing when they, when they teleport massive on a massive scale. Yep. Um, but they do teleport people in and out, but 
these people just show up without any warning and they know everything that's happened. And so we also got to see Andreas first <clears throat> kill as the shadow from Leviathan. And she just snaps the dude's neck like nothing. She's like, Hush. yeah, she pops up behind him, snaps his neck and then disappears. Uh, then we get the first scene where Lena kind of breaks down with Kara. <clears throat> And Kara shows up to get food for her and Alex, but Alex has to work. Lena's at the restaurant place working and uh, invites Kara to join her. And they basically, it's kind of her breaking down a friendship. And it's, it's, it's kind of sad because we know where it's going to go. And then we start shrinking our timeline where it says 12 weeks ago was Lex uh, with that whole thing with him dying. 10 weeks ago is when... Uh, Lena basically sells cat code to Andrea as a way of a getting Andrea to where she wants her when she learns that Obsidian needs a new headquarters. Mm-hmm. Two, she can get access to uh, her tech, and three, it's part of her plan for Andrea betraying her. Like she's already planted the seeds that she's not doing this to help Andrea, but she spins it. So that's like, well, you know, if you own the media, you can promote in your product for free, basically. Like, you control the perception of your products. Um, yeah. So. Like, Lena is full-on Luther, though. Like, somebody somebody yes. betrays her, does her wrong. Like, she is full-on, like, how can I ruin you? How can I use you for my own benefit? Like, <laughs> Exactly. Like she is full on like you did me dirty once I'm I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> and that is basically <clears throat> brings us up to where it's is all kind of Andrea coming clean to Lena. Lena decides to help Andrea. I'm busy. Back <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They, so Lena loses her new field test, her inception machine, to incept pretty much everyone in the DEO. She uses her signal watch to get Supergirl to save her and pl- and makes a fake break in. And my favorite part, honestly, is Supergirl doesn't know what's going on in the DER till Alex calls help. Uh, she yells, Kara, if I remember right. Um, and Yeah, she, I can't remember she, exactly. Because I have Alex yells for help. But I can't remember. I think she said Kara, but it's like she was tuned into her sister's voice. So when she heard that, she took off. And Rip Roar is free and taken by the sh- taken uh, back. Everyone's trying to figure out how what happened to the DEO. Jean talks about how it couldn't have been Malefic. Uh, Alex had like the special anti mind control earbuds in. So her and Jean were trying to take out everybody. Um, and, you know, that kind of gets to where we where we were talking about. But before Rip Roar left, he said Leviathan. So now they're like it's on their radar. Um, and then at the end of the episode, Lena accesses hope to access Eve Tessmacher's mind to find everything she can about Leviathan. And then, like we said, Rip Roar gets shot and killed by old man Leviathan. So that I mean, that was the episode. And like I said, I. It's probably one of my favorites so far this season just because I really like Lena and we, we're getting to learn more about her so that this betrayal that she's experienced in this event that she's going through feels more organic because of the past, the history. And we see why Andrea is now really part of this story this season. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this episode is probably one of the... Um, probably one of the best so far. Um, they've been pretty good this season. You know, they haven't quite, they didn't quite get to any point they did last season after, you know, man of steel, um, basically after man of steel until, um, Lex's appearance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, a, a fairly, uh, a pretty good episode timeline, mm-hmm. timeline thing out of there because they totally screwed that up. But um, what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, so that's, you know, confidence woman. I would, I, what would you rate it, James? Um, I mean, some of the thing, some of the things were, 
a couple of things I was like, huh? But and then the timeline thing, I mean, I give it about a a seven, seven point five. I, I'm gonna lean towards like a seven point five eight, uh, just because I, I I like that we're flushing Lena out. Uh, <clears throat> um, her her stuff was the best part of the episode, um, for sure. Uh, kind of giving you the um, the understanding of of why she is the way she is this season because of the betrayal that she, that she experienced so many times over her life. Um, like, like I had said, like, it doesn't make sense. Like she is so badly like hurt by this. Like she wants to, she wants to, to take over the world and, and control everybody because her friend who is a superhero didn't tell her that she was a superhero. Like, (laughs) It's not like she flat out told her like, Hey, I'm not Supergirl." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I don't recall at any point, uh, Lena saying like, Oh, Hey, are you Supergirl?" Or like, you look like Supergirl or anything like that. There were times when she should have found out, but she didn't. Um, cause she was, I don't know, blinded by friendship or whatever. But, um, but yeah, definitely the, um, the the close people the the friends and family that had betrayed her at important times in her life you know what i mean it wasn't just wasn't just always but it was at important times important people and important times of her life so it's you know it's kind of understanding uh understandable that why she feels this way now so that was the best part of the episode. There, there was, there was some good, there was some eh kind of stuff. Um, you know, Leviathans like, uh, are they, you know, popping in, popping out and, and, uh, knowing everything and controlling everything the, the way they do. Like that was pretty cool, but yeah, it, it's about a seven, 7.5. And then the timeline thing, that's kind of annoying, but like you totally just crap the bed on on trying to, yes. to set it as a timeline. Like you just totally messed that up. Yes, and that always kind of annoys me. But well, you know, I mean, they've been doing this show now for four years. Okay, so um, on the CW, they they've done the show. The show is in its fifth season, so like its fifth year. Superman did not just show up and did not just become an alien the year before Supergirl did. He was super. He was Superman when Kara crash landed on Earth as a teenager. Mm-hmm. So that's ten years ago before she even became Supergirl. And then during the run of Supergirl four years ago, the sun did not turn red. Right, because that means the the sun turning red would have happened like boom, and then like the week after should have been like the pilot of Supergirl. And it just doesn't feel right, you know? It just doesn't. It just, none of it pieces together completely smooth how they wanted to make it. So, because, um, I mean, Kara would have been affected by the sun turn. Yeah. Yeah. She'd have, if she was flying, she'd have fell to her death. Even even if her not being <laughs> Supergirl, just walking, she would have, like, got weak, felt sick. Like, there would have been a huge thing. And that's why. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can retcon stuff, but that to me is like. It's too close. Had it say like like you said a farther in the past um, event is when the sun turning red happened. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have been like okay, I can let that slide because you know that was way before the show. So like I can understand why that wasn't mentioned. Um, but whatever, we're we're just you know beating a dead horse now. Yeah. But anything. Else it was a good happen? episode. It was a good episode. Um, some some things withstanding. Um, it was a good episode. It's it's been a good season so far. Um, we'll see what they're trying to do with like Leviathan. We don't know anything or much about them from the comics or anything from them in the show. Yeah. And um, I'm telling you, you know, when you read Le- the last we've part got of Leviathan, you'll be like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. And then we got Crisis coming up, which is which is shaping up to be awesome. We all are anticipating crisis. Um, so which is, we got, we got a lot of, we got a lot to look forward to and we're going to, we're going to see where, where Lena goes and where Leviathan goes. Be interesting. 
be interesting to see see what what Lena does when she learns and investigates Leviathan. Because honestly, she should probably learn more from from Eve's memories if she can do that. Obviously, she's going to be able to do that. <laughs> it's going to be written in, and she's going to be able to do that. So obviously, she's going to learn more about Leviathan faster than say the DEO and Kara with actually, actually having to do, um, physical investigating as opposed to like the firsthand knowledge that comes from, um, Eve's memories. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lena is going to figure that out. And what's going to be interesting. Is she going to join Leviathan? Is she going to, you know, be Lena be a Luther and be super intelligent and be able to, to manipulate, be able to control Leviathan. Who knows? I, I don't know. Like there, there's potential. We'll, we'll see what happens. But when you expect potential from the CW, eh, you might get it. You might not. <laughs> yeah. So All right. well, temper, we're... temper expectations on that, but it, it, it's interesting to see where we're going. So with that said, we're going to bounce and we'll see you guys next time. Look up in the sky.